Hi, everybody. I am Dr. Sarah Beth Burke, and this is Becoming More Than Your Title. I am doing this series to investigate and share the stories of other professionals like yourself that have really rich and diverse job histories. They've worked in different sectors and industries, and they've had many different job titles. Some of them might be side hustlers or in the gig economy or freelancers and entrepreneurs. But essentially what these people share in common is that they have multiple work identities and usually say, I wear a lot of hats, but that doesn't fully express who they are or what they do. The problem many of us are running into in our work is that we are hybrids and don't know it because we didn't even know that term existed. I am a researcher of hybrid professional identity and I've been writing and sharing about this through my book more than my title and now through these stories because we don't know about hybridity well enough. It's not mainstream yet, but it's here already. Hybrid people, which means in the intersections of their different work identities, they are combining their identities into something that's new and defies labels. I call that your hybridity. So instead of just being a jack of all trades, you're actually in this intersection and that is your unique value and secret sauce. The best analogy I've heard for this is that when you have all these spices from your spice drawer, you know, and you pick them and you need the certain ones to make the combination and that's your special blend, your special spice blend, the same idea is here for being a hybrid professional. You have these unique identities that you're merging into something that you're like, this is the bigger me. I am the sum of all these parts. And that is a radical new way we need to think about some of the talent in the workforce. They're not just experts and they're not just generalists. Hy hybrids and hybridity is a new way to frame your gifts. And then that translates into your personal brand. So with that, I am super excited that I have my guest, Nicole Tremaglio here. She's gonna share about her background from retail and dance into social digital transformation and media. There's a lot of parts to Nicole. So I'm gonna bring her up in just a moment. And here we go. Welcome, Nicole. Hi, Sarah Beth. How are you? I'm doing great today. How are you? Good. Thank you for having me. Of course. I couldn't wait. You're someone I'm just getting to know now, but I can tell you are definitely a hybrid and there's a lot to explore with your story. So I kind of just want to dive right in. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, Nicole, I start this way with everyone because this is how we usually network in society with what do you do? We just use that question all the time. So why don't you answer that for us, Nicole? What do you do? Absolutely. So I'm a digital transformation expert and platform advisor. So I'm your go-to growth strategist for your digital platforms, presence, culture, and infrastructure. So I've been a full-time entrepreneur since March 2020 after working at global fashion companies like Armani and Michael Kors. And my through line is really executing strategies that leverage tech and digital products to enhance the client experience. You have that down pretty pat. That seems seamless. How did that feel for you? <laughs> Good. I write everything down and my delivery style is the happy medium between rehearsed and completely improvised. <laughs> that is the happy medium. I always yeah. told one time you should have it like in muscle memory, but not perfectly memorized. And I think you found that balance. That was well done. Thank you. Um, but I'm going to push you further because we use a lot of language that tends to be generic or conventional. So you mm -hmm. said digital platforms, like what does that even mean? What do you really do? Yeah, absolutely. So at the core, I make navigating the virtual world fun. Um, mm -hmm. I help people cultivate emotional resonance um, in the virtual world. So I primarily work with clients in fitness and lifestyle. And especially because of the pandemic, most people didn't sign up for this. They're personal <laughs> trainers. They're used to working with people in person. And they're like, how do I do anything online? 
And so I really help people realize they have that power within them to conquer the fear of the unknown and also a resistance to change. That was something that I faced a lot in my career in the fashion industry um, was managing user acceptance for any kind of digital or tech initiative. So basically making people not scared to do things yeah. online. No, that's such a unique term, managing user acceptance. I mean, mm -hmm. right there, it's like, again, these are jobs that didn't exist five, 10 years ago, things you couldn't get a degree for. And now you're like, mm -hmm. I manage user acceptance. That's just my role. And it's like mind boggling where these new places of work and jobs intersect. Mm -hmm. um, I also just in your description heard you kind of uh, uh, like refer to yourself well, I'm twisting all my words. You were inferring <laughs> that you were an innovator and also like a mindset shifter with clients. Like, again, there are so many little identities buried within our job titles. Would you agree? What do you think about that? Yeah, I. something that is funny is that I tell people I don't do mindset work mm. itself um, because you come to me believing in your idea. Yeah. I'm going to believe in your idea. I'm going to be your fiercest supporter. I'm going to be a cheerleader. I'm going to have a megaphone and I'm going to be singing your praises. But you need to come to me knowing that you have that in you. I help you ignite, but ultimately you're executing. Like I think that people go to consultants or even coaches and are, and are expecting the work to be done for them. Yeah. And it's like, no, that's not how that works. Mm -hmm. I'm just here to remind you that you can have be do whatever you want. And that includes your job title. That's really well put too. I haven't heard someone be so direct about that before. I'm like, these are your boundaries and you are there to make that person shine, but you're not doing the work for them. And therefore mm -hmm. they need to have their mindset figured out before they run in with you. This is great. great. Um, so my next question in my mind is about this hybrid professional and it, you know, it's a term that is just getting more socialized and normalized. And I'm wondering how did you come across it and what did you think of when you discovered it? Tell me that story. It's been a long time in the making. So when I was still working in corporate fashion full-time, I had a side hustle in the fitness space. So mm. I hosted all kinds of events, speaking panels, dance classes, et cetera. And I really talked about work-life integration a lot. I'd heard the term work-life balance quite a bit and just found that it didn't resonate. And especially as a dancer, balance is not equilibrium. And that's what people get confused. They think that balance is two equal parts and it's not. Balance is when one part's over here and one part's over here and you have to somehow find your equilibrium. And so I always found that integration was something that I was more concerned with because I wanted to bring all of the parts of me to work. But that was aspirational because I was in no way doing that. Yeah. I was living a very um, fragmented reality with my identities just compartmentalized in these tiny boxes and in trying to decide pick and choose whether I wanted to be the fashion girl, the fitness girl, the dancer. I realized that by forcing myself to choose or by feeling so pressured by society's um, you know, version of what I should pick and choose and who I should be, I wasn't showing up fully as any of those people. Yeah. And so I said, okay, work-life integration cannot be aspirational for me anymore. So yeah. once I finally reached that step in my own journey, I said, okay, now it's time to embrace the nonlinear trajectory. And that yeah. became kind of like my buzzword because I love the idea of applying your skill set to something rather than just putting a job title on something and having that define you. Yeah. Um, but even that, I found I wasn't actually embracing the nonlinear trajectory because that does come with ups and downs and twists and turns. And when you leave corporate less than a week before your industry goes into lockdown and all of the businesses you're supposed to serve close and then all your clients cancel on you because of the pandemic, you have to adapt. Yes. So <laughs> then from there, I'm like, okay, 
let's embrace this nonlinear trajectory and just understand that things are not going to go necessarily the way that they think we are going to. It's time to start. Now that I have time on my hands, yeah. it's time to unpack these identities and decompartmentalize mm -hmm. all of your different talents and skills yeah. and shift from being this multi-potentialite, multi-hyphenate, another yeah. buzzword <laughs> where I realize, okay, maybe I'm a bunch of things, but again, if you are a multi-potential, you still have to pick and choose. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that anymore. I want to be everything that I want to be. And I want to be everything that I want to be right now. And of course, you're going to lean into certain skills over others, depending on what client you're serving or who you're talking to. But the ultimate point is that in order to truly embody your own values and i personally in value in value value enthusiasm uh -huh. self-expression connection and innovation in order for me to do that mm -hmm. that means that i i just had to be a hybrid that's all mm -hmm. there is to it wow you just explained so much <laughs> in that. i i want to like pause and do some recap because what I was hearing there is, okay, so earlier in your career, you had this dancer and fitness identity and um, tell me the, the other one initially again. Um, just a fashion fashion right. girl. Yeah. yeah. And you were shape-shifting between these and I think you had mentioned about having different side hustles and mm -hmm. then, like you had to fit in these different boxes because society was telling you to and you thought you had to. And then you gravitated and moved into this multi-hyphenate world, which again was, you can be this or that, but never at the same time. Mm -hmm. and your aspiration was to make them all fit together. Mm -hmm. And that's where you've ended up now in this space of hybridity. So you are the sum of all those parts. So tell me how it feels now that you've arrived or what you've noticed is different that you've embodied using your language, being the hybrid. Yeah, it's really exciting to know that like I mentioned earlier, that power is within you. Mm -hmm. I think that as an entrepreneur, as someone who's, I like to say, curious in the pursuit of knowledge, mm -hmm. I'm always trying to learn more. I'm always trying to develop my vocabulary and just feeling like I don't have to constantly be improving myself. I can just be developing myself. I think there's, there is that difference too, between self-development and self-improvement. And most of us really stay stuck in the self-improvement. And I think that in being a multi-hyphenate, you're like, oh, how can I be this? How can I be this? How can I be this better? Whereas if you're a hybrid, it's like, I'm already all of these things and I'm just developing and and sharpening my skill set. I'm not trying to continue moving toward um, something that someone else wants or, or I've also kind of done this in the past, trying to do something different just for the sake of being different. You know, with it's kind of like whether you're the mainstream or the anti-mainstream, the mainstream is still the focus of conversation. Whereas if you're a hybrid, you are in your complete own third lane on the highway. There are no signs, there's <laughs> nobody else. You don't know exactly if you're even going in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. It's your road. And, and I feel like that sense of autonomy, independence yeah. and ownership, that is exactly who I wanted to become as an entrepreneur. Mm. And being a hybrid is the only way that I've been able to achieve those things. You are on fire. I just want to emphasize so many things. I mean, that autonomy and independence and freedom is yes, part of being an entrepreneur, but that's also about being a hybrid because you own your identity, your professional identity. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned being on your own road and yeah, there are no signs and you don't know which way it's gonna turn. And so it's that uncertainty, but that's also the gift that you get to create what you want your identity to be. It's not defined for you. It's not you follow this lane and it goes this direction. You take this career step next. The hybrid is really a space of borderlessness. I've heard people use that before. You are boundary crossing. You are pushing into spaces between that are nameless and defy categorization and convention, which is also why it's so freaking hard to define your hybridity because you're like, but I'm sort of caught between all of these things. What do I say? And therefore people revert to, I'm a jack of all trades, which again, mm -hmm. doesn't get you very far. So I right. love, love, love how you've just expressed your 
own sort of sense of becoming the hybrid and taking control and saying, I am all of these parts and I'm going to let that be me in my career. That's a big moment. What did you notice happened in your career when you got to that point? I started having more fun. Hmm. I mean, I, I love having fun and I found that I was always doing things and not having fun. Um, making content, for example, like I really try to have a good relationship with social media and use it to cultivate relationships in my life, professional mm -hmm. and personal. And especially during quarantine over the past year, social media was the only way that we were interacting with a lot of people because prior, I had a super, super high touch lifestyle in New York City. I would wake up, go to a fitness class, go to work for nine hours, mm -hmm. and then go grab dinner, go to a networking event, do all of these things and be with a bunch of people all yeah. day. And when that wasn't possible anymore, it's like, okay, how do I let everybody know what I'm doing? How do I feel like I'm not alone in everything mm -hmm. that I'm doing? I'm like the most extra extrovert ever, <laughs> in case you can't tell, but you know, realizing that um that I could just have complete ownership yeah. um was key and mm -hmm. when you're having fun that's when you end up having breakthroughs it's not when you plan everything perfectly it's not mm -hmm. when you think really hard about it you know I check my astrology app sometimes just to make sure yeah. but it's like what it comes down to is are you doing what you're really aligned with? And for mm -hmm. me, if I'm frustrated or I'm not having fun, that's my red flag that I need to change course. And if I'm having fun and enjoying myself, I'm doing something right. Well, that maps really well, that alignment piece and what you're saying about the joy and the fun, that maps really well to my research. Because when you're in your intersection of your best primary professional identities. I say these are the ones of your truest expertise that you want to be known for and, and you use the most frequently. When you're in the intersection of those identities, you're in your flow, you're in your zone of genius, things are alive and effortless. Like all of that good stuff you just mentioned is why the intersection is such a special space because you are in your best place. Who doesn't want to be there in any of their work, right? And so when you're forced to shut off different parts of yourself to fit in or be in these boxes, part of you is suffering because it's not being utilized and you feel that you feel disengaged. It affects your performance. So all of your, all the things you're saying ring so true to what I've studied and learned about people on this professional path, because not everyone is a hybrid, but the people that are like, they understand this struggle of like, oh, I, why do I always just have to be this or that? Like, when do I get to be all of me? Mm -hmm. so that permission piece, which you had pointed to a little bit, the permission to step into it and be all of it and then have fun is a big, big deal. So I wanna shift a little bit to moments of maybe the journey and the struggle, like any roadblocks, to use the metaphor of driving again, um, mm -hmm. barriers, that were preventing you or making it hard for you to understand how to move into the hybridity? Like, did you have people mm -hmm. telling you certain advice or pushing you certain directions? Like, how did you navigate and what were those experiences? Yeah, constantly. I experienced <laughs> a lot of resistance and yeah. now I like to look at resistance in two ways. So when resistance comes, that can be because A, you are not meant to be doing that thing or you are not approaching that thing in the way that's going to work out best for you or yeah. b if you experience resistance you are not prepared for that thing to change your life mm -hmm. like, can I you give find, me an example yeah like if i was procrastinating on a project yeah. and i know i want to do this project well do i really want to do that project because yeah. if i really want to do it i would just do it so am i not doing it because it's actually not a really great project idea. It was just the first idea that I thought of, mm -hmm. or maybe it's not a really well planned, or maybe I don't have confidence in myself to execute that project. Is that why it's not working? Or is it because it's scary to put yourself out there? Yeah, you could get rejected. People could say no, people yeah. can make fun of you. Um, if I've ever talked about any kind of resistance that I've received from people, 
uh, those close to me are always like, what do you mean? Or, oh my mm -hmm. gosh, wait, someone didn't really say that to you. And it's like, no, the things that people have said to me because they don't understand hybridity. Yes. That's yeah. something that you have to deal with. Everybody, like you said, everybody is not a hybrid. They yeah. don't have to be. And yeah. they also, I think just realizing that if you are a hybrid, not everyone is going to understand you and you have to be okay with that. Um, I think that in general, um, being a recovering perfectionist, I think I'm like pretty much over it now. Um, okay. But you know, being a recovering perfectionist and being someone who has really high standards for themselves, um, it can really get in your way of creating something amazing. If mm -hmm. you're always seeking external validation from other people, um, or if you are expecting praise in certain kind of ways. Um, I mean, most often we see this in terms of like Instagram likes and things like that. Like people now it's like embedded subconsciously because we're always on social media and we, yeah trick ourselves into thinking that the more engagement we get, the more people like us sure, and sure. the absolute uh, reverse of that too. Oh my gosh, no one like my thing. No one wants to buy my services. No one likes me. That's not true. You have to like, that's kind of petty to be honest. And you have to get over all of that yeah. really like low grade messaging that tries holding you back. Cause if you're a hybrid, you're stomping out convention anyway. You don't care. So no, no matter what anybody says, there's always going to be roadblocks. And it mostly does come in the forms of, of what other people uh, say due to their misunderstanding yeah. Yeah. Um, or lack of education surrounding hybridity. I barely have the vocabulary <laughs> for hybridity. I don't expect everyone to have it. But just yeah. knowing that if anything, you can help inform and hopefully mm -hmm. that inspires someone. You know, someone who's question uh, questioning you, your abilities, whatever, maybe they'll actually change their mind. Oh, Nicole, so many great points. Again, just want to reflect the light back to you so people Thanks. hear some of the key things I was hearing. This, this notion of not being understood, I think, is a really big one. And that people are like, what do you mean you want to do all these different things? Like, have you ever been told the, the advice, Nicole, just, just choose one, like just pick one, right? Pick something, mm -hmm. and you're like, but I need all of it. All of it is me, it's everything. And they're like, they, they're like, we'll do that during the day, but then do this at the, on the side or at night. And you're like, but these parts need to be part of me all the time. Like they're not separable. And I think that is one of those misnomers things that if you're not a hybrid, how can you understand that? Um, this is just part of you. It's part of your natural way of being to see things in my my world, it's I see things through art and education design and research simultaneously and I'm making sense of all that and like other people's brains don't work like that. Mm -hmm. and, and likewise, you have that uniqueness too. So yeah, this struggle to be understood is a really big one. Oh my gosh, Nicole, what are some of the lessons learned that you wish other people knew now that you've discovered that you can be the sum of your best identities um, and you're embracing your hybridity what do you wish you had known or what do you wish other people knew? Yeah, definitely that you don't need to fit in anyone else's boxes or even mm -hmm. the boxes that you created yourself. Yeah. Um, realizing that you are really complicit in any of those limiting beliefs that you have about yourself. Um, you know, you can blame your boss. You can blame your friends, your partner, your commute, your anything in your yeah. life that doesn't seem right. You can blame those external factors, but ultimately it is only going to be your responsibility to be in charge of your happiness, to be in charge of how you move through life and the level of peace that you're able to achieve on a daily basis is only dependent upon your reaction to circumstances. And by being proactive, you can try to predict what is going to lead to the best outcome for you you can't control it yeah but um but just really owning you no stuff's gonna come your way it just <laughs> is but trying to go with the flow a little bit more yeah, yeah. i mean i love what you said about the boxes because i think 
we so often don't even realize the labels that we've given ourselves or that people put on us, especially around our work, right? Because that's the dimension of identity I focus on is just within your occupation. So if people tell you, oh, like people told me, sorry about that, you're the design thinking guru. I started thinking of myself that way, but eventually I realized that's not really all I am. Like people mm -hmm. are narrowing me into this box and I need to break out of it again. Mm -hmm. And the only way I was able to break out was by defining and naming myself. I started calling myself this hybrid and then talked about myself as a creative disruptor. Even though I had a formal job title, I would say them hand in hand. I'm a director of X and I call myself a hybrid because I'm doing blank. And then suddenly I broke out of the convention of that job title into who Sarah Beth really is. And I did it in that smooth little intro during networking because mm -hmm. right away I was like, this is how I want you to see me. So I, I think, and you alluded to this earlier about education. If we want people to see us differently, we have to tell them who we are. We can't expect people to just assume or make sense because they're gonna put their own picture and box around us again. So yes, your takeaway of break out of those boxes and I would add to that, know what your boxes are so you can break mm -hmm. out of them, right? Oh, this is so good. Um, do you have any other thoughts or things you wanna share about your hybrid journey? I'm just curious to put that out there. Yeah, I just think that it's been really interesting for me to finally get to a stage of acceptance mm -hmm. of my hybridity. Mm -hmm. I know that you would think, oh, well, if you're a hybrid, that's just what you are if you've already gotten to that stage. But at every stage of development from going uh, from compartmentalized identities to having a nonlinear trajectory to being a multi-potentialite to finally coming um, at hybridity, that sometimes you do when you first approach that question it a little bit and say, I want to be a hybrid, but yeah. am I really? Do yeah. I really embody that? And the answer is yes. Oh, I love that. Um, that again goes back to some of my thinking that hybridity is a developmental spectrum. And you've mentioned mm -hmm. this idea of developing that people at first probably don't even know they're a hybrid, right? They're kind of just mm -hmm. graduating, starting a job, doing what they think they're supposed to do. But at some point you start accumulating these different professional identities, whether you have a side hustle or you just change jobs. And then you start to wonder and you start to feel that tension of like, oh, but I'm this and I'm this and what am I? So those realizations, I, I call it your emerging hybrid identity is starting to surface. You're feeling the pull, but you just don't know what it is yet until you're kind of in the state. I think you are in Nicole where you're fully embracing it. You're an established hybrid. And the last step of, of the journey that I even give to people is the owning it. It's the confidence, like, great, you know, you're a hybrid, but can you walk into it and tell people it? And how do you communicate it? So that is the last piece is owning it. And I think that's critical because the rest is useless if mm -hmm. you don't apply it. Right. Wow. That's so, so good. I feel like I just learned a ton about you and I'm so um, just enjoying your personal discovery process and how you you know, got so much from learning this one word of the hybrid and then how it's also just meant so much for what you're doing in your work. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much today, Nicole. This has been a pleasure. Thank you. Before we wrap up, if people want to find you, talk to you more, where can they find you? Definitely. So my Instagram, TikTok, Clubhouse, everything handle is at Nicole Tremaglio and my website in case you want to learn a little bit more about what I do, how I serve people, and the different parts of my hybrid identity, uh, what I formerly saw as boxes that now I see as just parts of me, um, that's all there at NicoleTremaglio.com. That's perfect. Definitely. You are a social media guru of sorts. You're on all these platforms. I need to find you on all of them, too. And of course, if people want to learn more about being a hybrid professional or follow me and see the book, morethanmytitle.com is where you can find all those resources. Nicole, I hope to see you again and learn more about your hybrid journey and this nonlinear path that you are finally making sense of. But I really appreciate your time today. Do you have anything else you want to say before we go? I think that about wraps it up, but thank you so much for having me. This has been so fun and I could talk about it all day. Yeah, I could too. I think we'll have to do another one at some point as like Definitely. the 202 version. Okay, Nicole, take care and thank you everyone for joining us. 
Thank you.